Hello fellow mail makers, I am Jonathan, also known as the PC Genie. So, today we're going to be learning how to turn these... Oh, sounds like money, doesn't it? ...into something useful. So, let's get started. Firstly, we need the right tools. So what we need are some decent pliers. Not large pliers, mind you, but smaller, more needle-nosed pliers. So this was a set I got from Homebase, a five-piece precision pliers set. But the same sort of thing, smaller pliers, the ability to do a bit of grabbing, and basically manipulate the rings to open and close them. Now bearing in mind, we're going to be opening them not outwards like that, because they end up, when you close them, they spring out again. We'll be opening them sideways. So then when you close them, you push it a bit too far, and it springs back to where you want it to be. But uh, some people mention on sort of forums and things dedicated to making this sort of armour that, I don't know if you can quite tell, let's see if the camera will focus, there we go. Uh, some of these teeth are not really ideal, because they can cause scratches and make the mail look a bit more sort of worn even before you've actually put it on. But, to put it in the words of people who promote loot boxes and gambling in video games, it's just cosmetic. So anyway, in terms of how the patterns work, we're going to be starting first with the four in one, the simplest. So here we have the four rings around the one ring to rule them all, so to speak. So I've got them already pre-opened. Now, this is going to be the first ring in the pattern, so it's going to look a bit awkward, but let's just close that up. It's all going to look very different. This is a bit like knitting in a way, it's something that takes a very long time to do, but it's something you can easily just instinctively do while watching TV or something like that. There we are. So you shall see, and I'll give you a close-up. When it focuses. Now have our four rings inside one. It currently looks closer to a keychain than a piece of armour. So let's splay it out, and that shows you the sort of pattern that we'll need. I'll give you a close-up. So this is what it will look like in practice. So you can see, these four rings contained inside this middle ring here. And you'll see there's a bit of a pattern starting to develop. Might be a bit hard to tell just one ring, but these, on the edges, have the part facing closest to you, upwards. Whereas this ring has the part furthest away from you, pointing upwards. Now this is the sort of pattern we're going to end up with. So to show you what it looks like in a bigger picture, let's throw this away for now, and here's one I made earlier. Now this was going to be an expansion on a glove, I'll explain why it didn't work later, but for now, let's have a look at this pattern, and let me Play it a bit more neatly. There we are. So then you can see that each row goes in the opposite direction. So if we look at uh, this row, it goes that way, and then this row goes that way, that way, that way, and back and forth in this sort of weave. Again, it is a bit like knitting. You've got these patterns going back and forth in this sort of line going in and out. Almost like sort of, again, stitching and sewing. But what this means is you get a strong pattern, that weave keeps it all together. So it's that whole, you know, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts kind of analogy. If I stop tugging on this now, it's quite tough. And that's going to be better than just the rings on their own. For another idea of how it can end up, I'll show you another thing that I've made, which will perhaps give some idea of what the finished product can look like. So here is something I made earlier as well. And this is a lapel. So that goes on something like a militaristic style jumper. You normally have these sort of cloth bands, I suppose you could call them, 
which are tacked down by Velcro. And normally you'd take them off and you'd add things like rank sliders on there. But for decorative purposes, I add these. Since I don't really have a military rank, I'm a civilian. But these look very nice on them. This just basically is the same sort of rectangular shape, or square shape, depending on the circumstances. And it just flipped around and I've just attached it to each side. Again, you can very much imagine mail armour like a heavy version of cloth. So you see this is almost tubular shape. All I've really done is I've got a shape like this, although obviously a different kind of rectangle, not quite so thin and long, more sort of broad and narrow, sorry, broad and short, and just simply wrapped it round to the other side and then attached the rings to each other so then you end up with that sort of shape. It can end up looking more rounded, or it can end up looking more sort of flat, rectangular. And that's the intention. So when it slips on, it works fine. And this simple concept, this really easy to do shape, is pretty much the majority of what you'll be making in mail armour. Another example I can show you, if I get rid of these two for a bit, is actually something a bit more exciting for you. Uh, I actually had a video about this earlier, but I'll show again. So these two gloves are made, as per the naming competition, called the Ring Fingerless Things Protecting When Fighting. Catchy. Um, it's the same concept again, but as you can see, you've got the pattern, that simple 4-in-1, expanded all the way along, and I've just simply sewn it on to the fingerless glove. So then it's become a form of armour. I'll put one on my hand, just to show you what it looks like. So again, it's, it's flexible. I don't need to worry about it being rigid like plates. It wraps all the way around the hand. And back there, as you see, it's attached. I've got it here. It goes all the way back round to the fingers. And I'm just simply having the splits there. So you could imagine these parts might even have been attached. But instead, rather than having those rings attached to each side, they're not attached, so even less effort for me around the edges. And then I've got this movement in the glove. And it simply stays on the glove by being sewn on. So as you can see, mail is very flexible. It's certainly got a lot of weight to it, a lot of steel involved. But it's still very useful and has a lot of practical purposes. And again, this is just the 4-in-1 pattern. And I'm already able to make something very useful. Another detail you might notice is I've actually got the gloves different to each other. One has a horizontal pattern and one has a vertical pattern. I've never done armoured gauntlets before so I was experimenting. So if we look at this gauntlet, let me give you a close-up. The rings are going vertically. So if we look at this pattern here, this has got the rings going up in that direction, so it goes like that. And then the next row, down. So up, down, up, down. On the other hand, if we look at the glove for my left hand, they go horizontally. So now we're looking at this row goes right, and then left, right, left. Now this can have some effects on the way the pattern ends up working and the way the chainmail actually structures together. But that's something that you need to practice and experiment with. But it just shows that something that would actually end up possibly being an oversight from you can make a difference in the way it affects the male. I'm still experimenting myself and I'm not quite sure about which is best for what. Again, I'm not an expert. This is just something that I know that you can have the different patterns and they do seem to have different effects on the way the pattern forms which can be advantageous or disadvantageous. Now I said earlier I was going to mention what went wrong with this. Excuse me, basically the idea was it was going to go here, it was going to wrap around the glove, and sort of cover around the wrist more, you know, give a bit more protection. It's actually going to expand directly just off of these, so it was going to be more like this. Problem is, although this part of the glove is a lot more sort of rigid, non-elastic. This bit is so stretchy and elastic that when trying to attach the rings, 
it didn't really want to stay and it was coming off all the time and I was having to fix it more often than I was wearing it. So I figured it's not worth it. So one lesson learnt, try not to put mail armour onto anything that's elastic. It's fine to attach to various pieces of clothing, and I'll show you an example of a hoodie that I added mail armour attachments to. But try not to do it to anything too elastic. Thank you for watching today's video on mail making. Uh, I've got lesson two ready, which will be about doing expansions and contractions. So do a triangulation and how it affects mail making and what uses it has in making things like coifs and doing things like sleeves or mail armour for example. And I've also got videos about the mail armour itself and how it worked historically. Thank you for watching and have a very good day guys. See you later.